Hello everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today for Song and Scripture. Uh, we're going to spend some time talking about the biblical origins of one of the songs that we sing in our worship services to our God here at Westbury Church of Christ. I'm Colin Elk. I'm the worship minister here, and I am so grateful that you're taking a few minutes out of your day to spend some time in the Word and spend some time thinking about our God. Uh, I can't believe that I've been doing this for uh, about six months now, uh, and I've yet to hit the song that we're going to cover today. Um, that's a little bit mind-blowing to me. This is a song that ranks incredibly high in the annals of hymn history. One of the greatest songs, worship songs, uh, to Yahweh that has ever existed, uh, perhaps. Uh, the song is In Christ Alone by Keith Getty and Stuart Townend. Uh, in my humble opinion, just me, uh, it, it ranks right up there with holy, 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 and amazing grace, and it is well with my soul. Uh, songs like that, uh, that's, that in Christ alone is right up there with the rest of them, uh, and maybe even better than all of them. Well, that's up for you to decide as well. Uh, the lyrics and an acapella recording of the song are linked in the description of this video. Uh, and so the thing that I think in Christ alone does really, really well uh, is encapsulates the entire gospel story as well as our Christian reaction and attitude to it. Uh, and it does all that in just four verses. Um, looking back on it, it's such an amazing feat by these two gentlemen uh, to fit all of that truth into one song. Um, but all, all of that truth makes it a little bit difficult to narrow down the scriptures that inspired the song. There are just so many biblical scriptural inspirations. A big one is Romans 8. Uh, I don't think you can look at this song without thinking about that. Uh, there are just so many that we could spend a few hours diving into each uh, specific reference, but we're not going to do that. I'm going to do my best to narrow down just a few key ones uh, that I think are good and important. Uh, so in the words of Maria von Trapp, uh, let's start at the very beginning, which is a very good place to start. Uh, the opening line of any song has got to hook you. It's got to make you want to keep singing it or keep listening to it. Uh, and it, this song does that very well, I think. Uh, in Christ alone, my hope is found. Now, I can't help but recall Jesus' words to his apostles in John 14. Jesus told them, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's John 14, 6, by the way. Uh, this line is such a great opening to the song, especially in reference to that scripture, because it's the single most important thing about our faith. It's the tent pole of Christianity. It's the one thing holding everything up. The one thing that binds us all together. Uh, the most important tenet that we all agree on. That Jesus is the Son of, that Jesus is the Son of God and that he is the only way to the Father. That's why we often ask the question of those who are about to accept Christ and be baptized. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Because if we aren't willing to accept Jesus as divine and Jesus as the only way to God, our entire belief system falls apart. If Jesus is only a way of many, or if Jesus isn't the way at all, uh, we are completely wasting our time and what we're doing. But that's not what we believe. Uh, we believe that through Jesus and through only Jesus, uh, a way to the Father has been created. Through his perfect life, his sacrificial death, and his powerful resurrection, we have salvation in God through Christ. That's why we can say, in Christ alone, my hope is found. Why we call him our light, our strength, our song. He's the cornerstone that weathers every storm and remains standing. The cornerstone that was rejected by men and was built by God. Now, through the second and third verses, the song keeps going through the gospel story. Um, in Christ alone, who took on flesh, uh, his birth, his life, his death, and his resurrection, how we were bought at a price. Uh, but then the point of all that is really driven home in the fourth verse. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. That line, I think, calls forth the Apostle Paul's words in Philippians 1.21. For me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. That should be our attitude as Christians, that as long as we're living, we will live boldly for Christ with the guilt of our sins washed away. We will work for him, rely on him, continue to trust him as we grow in him more and more each day. Um, we also have no fear in the end of our lives uh, either because we know what's waiting for us once we're gone. 
an even better relationship with Jesus, one that's going to surpass anything that we can possibly imagine or dream of. Uh, either way, the power of Christ is going to live in us and work in us. That's the beauty of our faith, that we are latching on to something far, far greater than ourselves. The power of God through Christ that created all things well, and the love of Christ that transcends time and space to endure for all eternity. And so the song leaves us with a final place that we plant our flag. Till he returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ I'll stand. And so we end right where we began, anchored in Christ, in Christ alone. If you would, uh, meditate on these powerful words this weekend. Uh, we're going to continue to talk about some of these ideas, to talk about how we can trust God and allow his power to work in us and provide for us uh, on Sunday morning here at Westbury Church of Christ. Uh, at 9 a.m., our doors will be open, and we will be broadcasting our service on YouTube and on Facebook. Uh, we'd love for you to choose one of those options uh, and join us and praise God with us. But whatever you choose to do, uh, we hope that you stay safe and that God blesses you.